since all of you have had them, some training, I'd like to begin with a song that uh, for me is a good song for reminding us of what this whole process is about, what it's designed to make possible. I never feel more given to than when you take from me. When you understand the joy I feel giving to you and you know my giving isn't done to put you in my debt but because I want to live the love I feel for you to receive with grace may be the greatest giving there's no way that I can separate the two. When you give to me, I give you my receiving. And when you take from me, I feel so given to. So we all know that, but we forget. We forget about that kind of giving because we get caught up in other stuff. How do you say please in a way that makes people enjoy giving with the spirit that that song was? Where the giving is self-full giving. That means it's not coming out of any giving in or giving up. It's not to buy something. It's not to avoid punishment or guilt. It's pure human enjoyment of enriching life, you see. So how do we say please in a way that makes that happen naturally? So we have this immigrant new into the country. And we're, we're, gonna, we're kind of in a mean mood, so we're going to play a trick on this immigrant. The immigrant wants to know, how do you say please in a way that creates that kind of giving. So we say now, when you're the most vulnerable and you need nurturing the most, I'm going to show you what to say and how to say it. Now, of course, the immigrant is going to be very interested. You, know, and you, say, you look at the person and you say this, idiot! <laughs> Wouldn't that be a cool trick to play on somebody? Yeah. Really, when you're the most vulnerable, it's been played on us. That trick has been played on us. Because we have been taught a language that when we are the most vulnerable, to say please in a way that almost guarantees we won't get what we want. If that isn't a horrible trick, what is? See? So let me show you what I consider compassion killers. Use any of the following kind of communication, you see. And it's almost guaranteed to make it hard for people to enjoy giving to you. Okay. Use any language that sounds like a criticism to other people. You see? So get out your mental erasers and let's erase the following words from our consciousness. Right, wrong, good, bad, normal, abnormal, appropriate, inappropriate. Well, I don't want to go on because the, the list is so long if you were educated like me. It would take us probably four or five days just to erase all of the words that are in our heads were put in there through our education that destroy this beautiful game of giving out of the heart. So every word coming out of our mouth that implies wrongness to other people, that sounds like wrongness to them, almost guarantees that we will not get what we want, you see. Whether it is a crude, judgment like idiot or a more sophisticated one like don't you think it would be more appropriate for you to consider other people's needs once in a while which of those two would you prefer if you were on the other end idiot. yeah me too I, I sometimes think it's just because i was raised in detroit but no i find other people prefer detroit style to nice nice criticism and anything that people here that sounds like a demand, you see, destroys the beauty of giving. How sad that we have been taught to use any of the following tactics, because if we use any of the following tactics to influence people, 
to whatever degree they carry a trace from the past to this moment about any memory of our having used these tactics, it destroys their natural capacity to give to us in the way that song was about. See? So to whatever degree a person remembers being punished by us in the past, to whatever degree the person sees us using rewards to get them to do things, to whatever degree a person associates us with shame or guilt induction. They recall us in the past trying to make them feel guilty or ashamed for what they've, when they haven't given to us what we wanted. Or to whatever degree we have used concepts of guilt, or excuse me, duty or obligation to get people to do things, you see. To whatever degree people carry a trace of that, it destroys what that song is about. It just makes it impossible for people to give with what is a natural way of giving. You see. So, we're here for a couple days to deepen our ability to remember what needs to be communicated between us and other people, just to make this natural giving happen naturally. And uh, to remind you all, I realize you've all been in trainings before, um, essentially, what it requires is that we communicate two things to people. What's alive in us? This is just another way of saying the question, how are we? Giving requires constant feedback about how we are. You see. So nonviolent communication is designed to keep our attention at that level. We have been educated to work for extrinsic rewards, not to look at whether what we're doing is serving life, making life wonderful, but whether it pleases the authorities. So we've been brought up to work for getting rewards from authorities, to avoid punishment by authorities, so that we will be dutiful citizens and do what the king says or the oligarchy says. or. Because we've been brought up, educated under domination systems, that have been, the purpose of which is to teach you to be docile and subservient to authority. So we've learned a language that doesn't help us to say how we are and what would make life more wonderful. So how do we say this simple thing, how we are and what would make life more wonderful? Nonviolent communication identifies four things. When we get fluent exchanging this information, communicates clearly how we are and helps us to understand how others are. It helps us to communicate to others what would make life more wonderful for us and hear from them what would make life more wonderful for them. And it has been my experience that when there is a flow of that information and nothing else, those compassion killers don't get mixed in. When we just have a flow of communication of how we are and what would make life more wonderful, we can resolve any conflict so everybody's needs get met without any coercion or violence being necessary. If we can just maintain that flow. So we'll have two days to practice that in challenging situations. And let's think of such a challenging situation where it's hard to maintain this flow, okay? Maybe the person that you are thinking of says please in the idiot way. You see. When they're in pain and they want something from you, they say things that makes it hard to give to them. And as you know, I like to use uh, the symbol of jackal language for such language. A language that makes it hard to give naturally. A language that makes it easy to hear criticism, judgments, demand. So maybe a, you have in your life now, at home or at work, somebody who speaks this language. And now that makes it a real challenge to end up with both parties giving from the heart. So can you speak nonviolent communication with that person, no matter how they communicate? Can you keep this flow going? And you also know that I like to use the symbol of giraffe language for nonviolent communication because giraffes have the largest heart of any land animal and 
Nonviolent communication is the language of the heart in the sense that the core of it are feelings and needs, which is the best way I've ever learned to describe what is alive in us at this moment, what is in our heart at this moment. Feelings and needs. So, everybody got such a person in mind? Write down, let's start with a hard-to-hear message from this person. Write down uh, what this person says when they're trying to say please, but unfortunately the person only knows these self-defeating ways of saying please. So they say things that make a real challenge for you to put on giraffe ears and hear the please behind the message. So write that message down to begin with. And I'd like to hear some of these hard-to-hear messages, messages that are hard to hear the pleas expressed behind it. Who's got one for us? Yes, what's the hard-to-hear message? This is what they say to you. That's what they say to you. You are not the king. You act just like that. You are not the king. You act just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that news to you, that you weren't the king? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so that's what made that hard to hear. You thought you were the king. Okay. I know, I know, I know. Other hard to hear messages, yes. Parents are to be seen and not heard. Oh, I like that. The child said that? The school, the school. Oh my goodness! So this was sco a school authority saying that to you. Parents are to be seen and not heard. I know what I'd say back if I didn't have my giraffe ears on. I'm going to show you that parents are obscene <laughs> when they're not heard. <laughs> I can usually easily give a jackal response to almost any message. It's, it's, it's the giraffe ones that are a challenge for me. When people need empathy the most, they're communicating in the ways that you all showed us. Every one of those statements, I would say, is a classic example of somebody who is desperately needing empathy. Now, as you know, what we mean by empathy is that you hear at that moment that they say that, what they are feeling. That you see the needs of theirs that are not getting met. That's all you see in that message. At this moment when they say that, that's all you can see. And to do that, of course, you have to have your giraffe ears on. Because with the giraffe ears on, this technology screens out any criticism. You cannot hear criticism with these ears on. See, so as soon as these ears go on, the heart starts to flash. You see only the heart. So write down what you say to this person when you have the ears on. Who's got one for us? What was the original message? Stay away, you jerk. You're bad for me. Stay away, you jerk. You're bad for me. Okay, now what do you say back? Are you feeling angry and needing to be alone? Boy, you confused this poor jackal. He wasn't expecting that. See, the giraffe ears keep our attention even when, the pers even when we're silent. We still have our attention on the feelings and needs. So what feelings and needs are behind the message? Look, don't pull that psychology crap on me. Perhaps. We don't know. See, be careful about ever making these statements in a declarative way, like they are. But I would guess that the person might be angry. And what might the need be behind this statement, don't pull that psychology crap on me? Pardon? That's a, but don't manipulate me is not a need. That's a diagnosis, manipulate. See, but what would be the need behind don't manipulate me? What would the person be needing if they were thinking that we were manipulating them? They have a need for equality. 
to be treated equally, not to be treated like they're a patient being interviewed by a psychotherapist or a student being questioned by a... Yeah, so the person has a need for equality. Now, if a person sees in your eyes what will be there, if that's where your attention is, your attention is on they're, they're perhaps angry because they have a need for equality that isn't being met. That's very powerful, even if you say not a word. But if you hear that as a, an attack, you will have different eyes. Whatever you say next will come out of a different energy if you hear any criticism in that. Okay? Some others. Yes? Don't be ridiculous, I'm fine. So my answer to that, I don't want to be, um, are you worried because you need more respect for your privacy? Yes, and you know, you have no respect for anybody's privacy, you know. You just come barging into everybody, and I'm not the only one that thinks that about you either. <laughs> so it irritates you when I question No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Never connect yourself with the other person's pain. <laughs> not... It irritates you when I, right into the jackal's jaws when you do that. <laughs> you see, so let's do it again and get that poor baby giraffe out of that jackal's jaws. Try it again. Because? <laughs> see, as soon as your attention is on the other person's needs, but don't say you need me to, because then, the then the baby goes right back into the jaws. So, you need what? What is the person needing? Yes, yeah, so whatever. We don't have to guess right, but we have to sincerely try to guess what the need is that's in there. Okay, some others. Yes? My renewal was relaxed. I heard you the first time. Relax, I heard you the first time. So, when I remind you to do the lawn, are you feeling frustrated because you need autonomy? I couldn't think of what the need is. I think that's pretty close. Uh, <laughs> Relax, I heard you the first time. I'd be, I would guess autonomy. But notice, we don't have to guess right. We have to be sincerely wanting to connect with the need. That's all. That's, that's the intent is what's important. Not that we guess right, but that we be sincerely interested in connecting with the person's needs. Yeah, you treat me like, you know, I'm stupid. I don't hear things, you know, and like... Uh, you just have to get everything done right away. I mean, you know, the world isn't going to come to an end if the grass doesn't get cut today. See, mm -hmm. There's no but in a giraffe empathy. It's, if you really are trying to empathize, you don't say but. You say, so you're really annoyed and really want to do things when you choose to do it? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. And I'd like to know... Uh, how I could let you know that it's important for me that it be done now without this sounding like a demand. Could you tell me that? Huh? <laughs> I mean, if it's really important to me now, I have a need for some order, uh, some beauty in our lawn, and I've been waiting for this and it's not done, I'd like it now. How can I say that without you hearing that uh, I don't value your autonomy? I don't know. Well, I'm glad we're talking about this, because... Uh, this little uh, dynamic goes on between us. I've been uh, doing some research 312 times a day on the average. Uh, <laughs> Accurate? Or maybe, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. I've been to mine. Uh, I've been to mine. Uh, several of you have heard me say what happened in a similar encounter with my youngest son one day when I said, would you please hang up your coat? And he said, who was your slave before I was born? I mean, yes, I, 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 I've been there. Uh, you know. <laughs> yes. My original statement was, you are being rude and angry with me right now. And my uh, one of the response is, it must be painful for you to be around me. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. No, no. Not. See, if you have giraffe ears on, you can't for one second imagine that you can be a source of another person's pain. You can't imagine that anybody would ever be angry with you. 
where anybody would ever not want to be around you. It's just unimaginable. So, no, no, no. It's not you that is the problem. It's that their needs aren't getting met. That's the problem. You have nothing to do with that. So just hear the need. That's always what the problem is. The need is what we want to hear. So what is the need behind the judgment rude? See? So are you feeling, what did you guess the feeling was? Uh, No, no, nobody would ever want to get away from you. See, that's a strategy. Even if they wanted to get away from you, that's not the need. We don't go to strategies until we've heard the need. So, first the feeling. What might they be feeling? What, guess again the feeling. Withdrawn. Well, that's what you're judging them as being, but it's not how they're feeling. What, what are they feeling when they say you're rude and so forth? Anybody want to help him out? What? Are you feeling hurt because you are needing? What might the person be needing behind judgment like rude? Are you feeling hurt because you're needing some understanding? Of course I am, but you can't give it to me because you are so preoccupied with your needs. My needs just don't matter. And why is it that I always end up being in a relationship where my needs don't matter? <laughs> now, aren't you glad you have giraffe ears? Look at what... The Look at what just a little bit of empathy has uncovered is behind all of this, you see? So now, continue. What is this person feeling? Neglected. No, that's a diagnosis. Don't say words like that out loud to this person. They'll agree with it, and it will reinforce their jackal thinking. We don't want to reinforce jackal thinking. Yes, I do feel neglected. You always neglect. See, neglected isn't a feeling. That's a diagnosis. So how is this person feeling? I need to feel like my needs matter. My needs have never mattered. See, the problem is there's givers and receivers and givers and takers in this world, and I'm a giver and he's a taker. <laughs> oh, let's see you laugh when you're in his role. Yes, yeah. Oh. Oh, you've heard it a few times. Yeah. Other people's jackals are always funny. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Just repeat back. The person now pretty much saying what their feelings and needs are. What are they feeling and needing? Despair because they're, you're needing what? What do they need? I need to feel like my needs matter. Uh, need just repeat. Now they're pretty much down to it. Now just reflect back in pretty much the same words, you see. When, even by guessing wrong a few times, we've helped the person get clearer what the need is. So now we just have to confirm for them that we've heard it. And, and to us. Someone to hear you, to care about you? I need to feel like I'm, I'm valued, that what, what goes on in me matters. No, too quick, too quick. You're trying to fix it before the six-hour limit, you see. <laughs> a giraffe never tries to fix the other person's pain without a six-hour delay that gives the other person all the time they need to have their pain fully understood before you try to fix it. So you're going much too quick to trying to fix it. This person still had another lots of depths of pain to go through, needed to say more. But when you turn away from their feelings and needs and start to make it better, you make it worse. So you're saying you need me to care about Not you. Keep yourself out of it. When we hear feelings and needs, we don't appear in it. So you're needing to feel like you matter, that your needs matter. Yes, it's been my whole life. I've never had it. Why is this? So it's painful because you're trying, you have a need to understand what happens that goes on that makes this happen all the time. Yes, yes, yes. See, they may have a lot more to say. So jumping too quick into fixing things uh, cuts, perhaps what they're about to get to is the most important part of all. I'm understanding that I need to keep my head down as a target. No, you need to keep your giraffe ears on. Then you won't hear any aggression coming at you. There is no aggression. All that's coming at you ever from other people is, please, 
or thank you. That's the only two things that human beings are ever saying. Please and thank you. And both of them are precious messages if you hear them accurately. The thank you is a celebration of life. Life has been made more wonderful. The please is an opportunity to make life more wonderful. So, Life for a giraffe is constant celebration. We're either celebrating how life has been enriched or how it can be. You see, all giraffes like to do is play. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I get stuck because I can do it one layer, maybe two layers, but then I'm like, I want to jump <laughs> in for the fish. But it's like, like, I don't know how to go to the next level. Like, I, I think I understand it, and I don't know. It, I almost feel like I'm repeating the same question, so you're really frustrated because you're... I think what you will see in, in, in this sequence, we weren't repeating anything. Each time we said something, they went to a different message. So there was a different message each time. You see, it wasn't the same. The first one was, uh, are you annoyed uh, because uh, you're not getting the attention that you would like? Something like that. Yes, and why does it always happen? So, so the person went then to a deeper level. Of despair, will this ever change? You see, that's a quite different message. Nobody has ever accused me of that before. <laughs> How is this jacket cooperative? Because he kept going for the monologue. Because he kept getting empathy. You see, as, as long as this person was getting empathy, they naturally see what else is going on inside. You see, so now that's, that's going to happen with any jackal if they get the empathy. <laughs> You're listening, Jackal. Okay, so now let's say it's we've stayed with it and through a few more messages and just hear how desperate this person feels to get their needs, feel like their needs matter. Okay, now, so when a person's in pain and we have giraffe ears, we guess that the first thing they want, the need that they have, is empathy, understanding for what's going on in them. And now, how do we know whether they've had enough of that? Well, if a person's had the empathy they need at this moment, first of all, it feels good. Oh, wow. Just to have somebody hear you without giving you advice, without criticizing you, without them taking it personally. What a gift. What a gift. Martin Buber, the Israeli philosopher and psychotherapist, says it's the most precious gift one human being can give to another the presence that empathy requires, just that we still any reaction on our part long to just stay with the other person. We don't push down our feelings, it's more that we are fully attending to them. What a gift to give to another human being. But now, let's also look at how to help the other person after the empathy, after we see that they feel good right now. It hasn't solved the problem. I don't mean feel good that everything has been solved. I mean a relief that somebody is hearing me. And that's one sign then, this relief. The other, notice the person stops talking now. They, they don't seem to have an urge to continue. But even then, we have to be careful. They might still have more. So before we move to the next step, we say, is there more you'd like to express, to be heard? And we're slow to get away. You see, we're not in a hurry to get past this. No. No, you understood me. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we move to the post-empathy request. After the, we always assume that the first thing the person wants is empathy. Now, what form, that takes some guessing sometimes. Sometimes the person doesn't need us to repeat verbally. Sometimes they just can see it in our eyes that we've understood their feelings and needs. If that's the case, we don't always have to say it out loud. But sometimes they need it. So we have to learn by guessing, and sometimes we're going to guess wrong. Sometimes we're not going to say it because we think we've understood. There's no need to say it out loud, and the person's going to say, Well, don't, do you understand me? Say something. Oh, okay, so are you feeling because you're needing? 
And sometimes we're going to do that. Are you feeling, don't, I don't need that now. I need an answer. Okay. So we'll guess wrong. That's okay. But now after the empathy, we need to help this person get clear what they want from us after the empathy. Okay. Now if the person's been real vulnerable, very often what they want and seldom know how to ask for is this. If they had a giraffe consciousness, after making themselves this vulnerable, they would say this. And I need you to tell me how you feel right now, now that you've heard this. I need to see what's alive in you, how you feel, what your needs are. But people sel seldom are conscious enough to ask for that. The closest they can come is something like this. Well, you must think I'm pretty stupid to get so upset about this. But that really means, okay, you've heard me. I'm very vulnerable now. Please tell me what's alive in you right now. How are you feeling? What are you needing? But sometimes that isn't what they want. Sometimes what the person wants is some advice. They need us to suggest some ways that they could better meet their needs. But if we guess they want advice when they need the other, it's very painful for them. If we're giving them advice when they really need to hear how we feel, it makes, makes it painful for them. Or if we tell them how we feel when they need the advice. So we need to help the person get clear what they want from us after the empathy. So let's say we're at that point now. So guess what this person might want from you now. Um, are you uh, or client? Or want from me? What they want from you, see you've heard now this pain they have. That they're, Keep in mind the central need that you heard was that their needs don't matter. Well, let me see uh, if I'm understanding what's going on. It sounds like a lot. The thing that the moment that I'm hearing the loudest is uh, what a strong need you have to connect with your daughter in a way that nurtures you both. Is that is that what's really central for you in this? That's that's very central, and and you and other people, but at the moment, it's uh, this is a good learning for you because you see this morning that you had a need to connect with her in a certain way, and yet you weren't clear about exactly how to do that. And you saw that the words and the consciousness weren't there for you at the moment, that, something, that you needed more of something within yourself before you could give her that. And to me, that's a big step just to get that far in the amount that you have <laughs> spent so far in the training, just to be conscious at that level. So then now you're wondering, now I want to know what, what has to go on so that I can really put it into practice in that situation. It's one thing to do it in the workshop. It's another thing to put it into practice right there when you want to do it. So what I'd like to do is go through what the steps would be that I think would help you get there. Uh, so we could do it this distance, or you could come up here and we could do some work. Would you be willing to do? Come on up. Yep. <coughs> so this is where it really helps me to be part of a giraffe community of people that I can call on when I get stuck and I'm not in touch with what's going on in me that's keeping me from being able to connect with this other person. And so more than a few times, I can recall calling up a friend of mine and, and say, could we spend some time together today? You know, this, this kid is driving me nuts. And I, everything I say is making it worse. And uh, I just really need to get connected to what's going on in me, what's being triggered in me that's so painful. Okay. And how wonderful that I've been had an abundance of people with giraffe ears who, when I say that, uh, they, and we get together, they do not give me advice. They do not give me sympathy. You see. They do not tell me, well, you think you have it bad. You should hear what happened to me the other day with my child. And, but they're really able to hear the pain that's going on in me, even when I'm not too clear about it. Even if I want to say to them, look, I don't want to say it in giraffe. I, I don't know how, if I could say it in giraffe, what's going on in me, I probably could handle it myself, but I, 
I just got a whole bunch of stuff going on in me, and I need to say it, and I, and I need some real help in getting connected. So the other person has giraffe ears. They'll help me. They'll, they'll listen for what's alive in me, you see. Uh, it just looks to me like this kid is going to do whatever he wants, and he doesn't give a damn about anybody else in the family but himself. Yeah. So it's kind of, you're feeling aggravated and would hope that your needs and other family members' needs would be taken into consideration. Yeah, and you know, uh, I know that I've probably asked for it because I know how I've been treating him in the past and he's still carrying that with him. But I've been trying hard and you know, damn it, it's hard to, it just seems like it's never going to shift. Yeah, so you're feeling, some, you're feeling bad because you would have liked to have treated him differently in the past and now you're afraid that that's going to get in the way of connecting with him now in a way that you'd like. See, so if I could have somebody around that can help me deal with that. I'm much better able then to go to the sun. So let's start with that. Let's, uh, I'll be your friend, your giraffe friend, and just tell me how you're feeling now about what happened this morning with your daughter. Um, I feel um, totally inadequate to establish a, a connection with her right now. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that now that I have some awareness around um, um, nonviolent communication, I see that a lot of the ways that I've been approaching her have been um, um, uh, non-constructive in terms of establishing a So you're, you're frustrated, if I'm understanding you, because you really have a need to connect with her and uh, the skills for doing it, you're not finding. That's right. Mm -hmm. Notice he had a lot of inner jackals about his being inadequate and self-judgment. And notice with giraffe ears, I translated his message just into his feelings and needs, you see. So you're scared. See, he's giving me an analysis. And so I'm not hearing his analysis. I'm hearing his present feelings. I, I, keep, I keep my focus on what's in his heart right now. The more he's up in his head analyzing, see, the farther from being able to resolve this he's going to get. So he's a baby giraffe. He's still thinking and analyzing. And I'm helping him by just hearing what's alive in him now. He's scared to death. He really... You really want to protect her from any any harm that could happen to her from what she's doing. Right. And how painful it must be not to know skills for doing that right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten enough understanding at the moment to try now to practice doing this differently with her? Or is there more understanding you'd like? I, I have a strong desire to, to be a good father. Oh, be careful of that one. Didn't you hear my definition of hell? It's to have it's to have children and think there's such a thing as a good parent. Be careful of that one. Let's translate that into giraffe. So you have a strong desire to develop skills that will help you connect with her in a way that will be good for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot more fun than trying to be a good father. That's, that's almost as suicidal to try to be a good father as to be a competent male. No, I gave that up. Oh, well, good. <laughs> I'm relieved, I'm relieved, I'm relieved, yes. I... Yeah, okay, so now you're her, and I'll be you, and I'll be you with giraffe ears.
So you be the daughter. And what did she say at breakfast? Well, I, I started by saying um, I, I'm feeling disconnected. I'm sad, uh, daughter, because I'd like to be connected with you in a different way. And uh, how do you feel when I tell you this? Now, my silence is because her behavior stimulated in me a lot of stuff. It makes it hard for me to hear her. I'm starting to feel hopeless already. And what's going on in me is, oh, shit, I'm not going to be able to connect with her. And I'm getting angry at her. I'm getting angry at myself. So I'm doing a lot of work on myself right now. Yes, uh, plus the, the, the lot of fear and rage all mixed together because those two go together because I'm a baby giraffe and it's hard for me to stay connected to the, the need for her safety. I just go up to my head as, doesn't she know what the hell she's doing to herself? I know you'd never think that way, but I, but I would. You know. <laughs> I used to get angry at my children for running in the street. <laughs> two years old, as though they should know better. But behind that, I was scared to death. But I didn't know how to get in touch with the fear, but I knew how to get in touch with the judgments and the anger. Okay, so I give myself some emergency first aid empathy right now. And it sounds like when I say I'd like that connection, you feel tense and are not too clear what's what wanted of you. Is that, is that what's going on for you right now? Now I'm worried uh, that you're really annoyed and just would like me to leave you the hell alone, and I'd like you to tell me if that's going on. I'm, you know, I'm really so sleepy. If you wouldn't drink so damn much, you wouldn't get so sleepy. <laughs> That's going on inside of me, but I had the good I had the good sense to bite my tongue and not say it. So now I have to give myself some other empathy because I'm I'm angry now. If you wouldn't drink so damn much and go to sleep at three o'clock in the damn morning, you would you wouldn't be so dead. <laughs> but I know you'd never think that way. <clears throat> I'm giving myself uh, out loud the self empathy. I'm pissed right now. I I just so frigging angry. What the hell does she expect going to bed at 3 o'clock and half drunk, you know? What's she doing to herself? Does she have any concern for herself? Then at least she should be aware of how this is affecting me. I try now, now that I've enjoyed the jackal show in my head. See, I call that part the jackal show. Uh, and enjoying it, I don't think I should think differently. If it's in there, it's in there. So I just enjoy the jackal show. I, I, if I want to really make life worse, I'll tell myself, if Marshall heard these thoughts going on in my head, he'd, <laughs> he'd think I'm a terrible jackal. No, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't say I should be a giraffe now and give her some empathy. No, no, no. I enjoy the jackal show that's going on in my head. And then I look behind the jackal show to what my needs are. And now the anger is fear. I'm scared. I'm scared to death for her well-being. I'm sad that I don't know how to help her. I feel powerless. Damn, this is hard. Damn, this is hard. And I can start looking for her. Because I've got myself back to life. I'm really down in touch with myself. So you're really kind of worn out right now. It's kind of hard to deal with difficult stuff between us when you're feeling this tired. Yeah. 
maybe hope that we could at least get a start at it right now, though, because I'm scared to death. I really have a need for your well-being, and I'm scared with the hours I see you keeping, the drinking. And I'd like you to tell me if you're hearing any criticism in this. Well, you know, I really don't have the time right now to go into this. I've got to get going. I've got to get to here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so you're worried partially about school and want to get there on time. And if that's all that's going on, I'm quite happy to set another time for us to continue this. I just need to know, though, whether you would be willing to look at this relationship between us when we when you have time. Sure. Okay. Now it's this evening. I'm glad that you've agreed to continue the discussion. I just need to be sure that you're doing it because you want the same thing I do and not out of guilt or afraid of my reaction. So I'd like to really tell me how you are feeling about this conversation right now. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really know how I feel. Kind of mixed. Not too sure. The one thing I'm feeling is deep gratitude that at least you're willing to do it because it's I have such caring for you and tenderness for you, all mixed together with fear and a bunch of feelings. And it's it's a great, it's a gift for me that we're having this opportunity to talk. And I'd like to know how you feel when I tell you about all these strong feelings that are going on in me in relationship to this talk right now. Notice, I seldom, if ever so far in the dialogue with her, have used more than 40 words before asking for a reaction. And those 40 words were mainly to tell her what's in my heart. And as soon as I did, I elicited a reaction. The more words we use before getting a connection with the other person, the less connection there'll be. And I'm going to say some other things, and it would be a great gift to me if at any time you hear me criticizing or making any demands that you stop me. Because that will not be my intent. In no way do I want to criticize you. In no way do I want to pressure you to do anything that you don't choose to do. So it would help me if you'd be willing to stop me at any time you hear either of those things. Would, would you be willing to do that? I'm scared when I see you drinking beer for many reasons. One, I, just your physical health. But more than that, I'm scared that you've got some pain inside and you're dealing with it through the beer. And if that's so, I would really like us to find another way of dealing with the pain. And I'd feel relieved now if you'd tell me what you hear me say so I can see if I'm making myself clear. Well, what I hear you say is that you're um, afraid that uh, I may be dealing with my pain and confusion um, by staying out late and drinking beer. Thank you for hearing that, yeah. and. And that if that's so, I'd like us to find another way of dealing with it. How do you feel about that? Oh, I, I don't. I don't really think it's that big of a problem. I don't see what the big deal is. Really, I, I, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> I 
I'm wanting to give evidence now of why it is a big problem. <laughs> How much beer I see going on, some things that have happened when she's been drunk. Uh, so I had to take a deep breath. <coughs> so it's kind of frustrating for you now to deal with this because for you, it, you're not worried in the way that I am. You'd, you'd like some trust that you can handle it. I can take care of myself. I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That helps me get clear then. I guess what I'd really like to do is leave the drinking off for the moment. And I'd really like to know what it would take for you to share with me what is bothering you in a way that you would feel safe to do it. So. I could feel more connected to what's really going on in you. What would you need for me to feel the safety to do that? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to not to talk. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you're thinking of some of the discussions we've had and how uncomfortable you were with that. You'd like to avoid getting into those kind of listening to me talk about things. I just, I just feel with you, Dad, that I just, I can never do anything right. I just can't, I can't do anything right. Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. Now I'm jackling myself a bit. I'm thinking of all the lecturing I've done and uh, beating myself up. See? And I hear behind that just my sadness because of how much I want this connection. Now I can start to hear her again. <laughs> so you certainly want to avoid getting into any discussions that end with you ending up feeling hurt because you and not didn't get the understanding you wanted, and instead were hearing criticism. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. And I feel really sad because I would have liked to have listened so much differently in the past than I was able to. So I have no trouble understanding that need of yours. I would have liked to have responded differently. That's mourning in giraffe. You see, I, I didn't think I'm a bad father. I'm very clearly just mourning that I would have liked to have responded differently than I did. And I'm confident that I can listen differently than I did in the past. I can express my pain differently so that you'll get more understanding and there won't be the criticism. And I'd like you to tell me how you feel when I tell you I'm confident that I'm learning how to do that. I think that would really help. Yep. Okay. Now you do. Well, for, uh, first yeah, of all, let me say that I think the biggest, the biggest aha for me when you were doing that was allowing the space and the time to empathize with my jackal. The part of me that was like, oh, jeez, you know, the, 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 the part, the, the, the anger, the frustration, the helplessness. Uh, that I feel in not being able to reach her and um, because uh, I, I realized what I was feeling was I should know how to do this. I mean, I've just invested in this seminar. Why can't I <laughs> figure this out? Or So then it becomes a jackal beat up, what you were saying. And there was a, like, there's... Uh, there's, the, that needs to happen. The, the, the uh, support for feeling all those feelings, the jackal feelings, 
need to happen before moving on into putting on giraffe ears? Well, it's putting on the giraffe ears internally, listening to the jackal messages inside, getting connected to my needs behind it. Oh, it's... See, I'm glad that you're seeing the importance of taking our time, you see. Uh, many, many of you have been in workshops before have seen me uh, show this picture that I carry in my, with me everywhere I go. It's a very powerful for my daily meditation. It's a, a sun, it's a picture of a son of one of my Israeli friends. And it's, the son is in this picture about 21 years old. And he's wearing a t-shirt that says, take your time on it. And uh, this was in a book that his father wrote about him after his death. He was killed in the Battle of Lebanon. And it was, uh, this picture was in the book, and it was the last picture taken of the son alive. And when I, he gave me a copy of the book as a present, and when I saw this picture, I said, uh, Yeshua, do you have that picture? Could I have a blown up copy? He said, yes, I'd be glad to give it to you. And he said, why? I said, that's very important to me because that message, take your time, is one that I try to remind myself of daily. Take my time to come from an energy I choose to come from, rather than the one I've been programmed to come from. You see, it's so important to me. I need reminders of that. And then my friend Yeshua said, then you should know the rest of the story. I went to his officers afterwards and said, why did you send him into that? Anyone would have seen he was going to get killed. They said, we didn't take our time to think. You see, so that picture has great power for me to remind myself, no matter what the, the conditions, take your time. Of course, I told you yesterday, I think the group was with me yesterday, that my oldest son wasn't appreciating this one time when I was listening to my own advice to take my time. We were, we were in an argument, uh, and I was trying to take my time to come from a different energy, and his friends were waiting for him. And, and he said, Daddy, it's taking you so long to talk. And I said, do it my way or I'll kick your ass. <laughs> I can say that quickly. He said, take your time, Dad. Take your time. <laughs> People who know me in my jackal state are very patient. Yes, taking the time to come from an energy we choose to, to do the work on ourselves at that moment, I call it bringing myself back to life. I know whenever I'm angry, guilty, depressed, or shame, I'm not alive. I'm up in my head jackling people, myself or others. I'm not alive. I'm not really connected to my needs or theirs. If I react out of that energy, I've never gotten my needs met. So take my time. Take my time. Come back to life before I open my mouth. Okay, Dad. We'll, we'll, borrow, we'll, we'll use this mic here. So I'm sitting there like this. What do you say to me? Gabi, uh, I feel sad and um, frustrated um, about my communication with you. And I have a need to connect with you in, in a new way, in, um, in a way that uh, perhaps I haven't connected with you before. And I was, okay, and I was wondering if you would like to talk about this. What is? <laughs> you know, I, I, I sense that um, you feel tired right now. Yeah. Just what I want right now to, have, to hear your criticism.
Well, I want to. I want you to know that I can. Empathy before reassurance. So you're feeling you're feeling tired right now, and you're feeling that I might criticize you. Never hear what a jackal speaking person thinks. So don't hear that I think you might criticize. Never hear what another person thinks about you. Hear what need is behind it. Hear only the needs behind it. So, yeah, I think you might criticize me. So translate that into a need. What is my need? That you're feeling protective. Need to protect yourself from you have a need to protect criticism. yourself from criticism. Yeah. Now I can hear what you were about to say first, but I needed that empathy first. Well, I can appreciate that, and um, I'd I'd like you to consider giving me the opportunity to to speak with you. What do you want to say? I'd like to establish a, a new kind of connection with you. With the speed of light, go to a present request. <laughs> After your needs are on the table with the speed of light, elicit a reaction from the other person. I'd like to establish a, a new kind of a connection with you and I'm wondering when a good time would be for us to sit down and explore that. Okay, we're there at that new time now. <laughs> okay. And now we're at that time, so what do you want? Say the same need now. I, want, I said to you earlier today I wanted to establish a new connection and what is your present request of me right now? about that new connection. Uh. <laughs> Let me give you several uh, suggestions. I'd like you to tell me if you're interested in this. If that would meet your need. Gabby, I'd like to establish a, a new quality of connecting with you, and, and I'd um, like to know if you'd be interested in that. What kind of connection? But now notice, you see, he used far fewer than 40 words. He didn't go on to explain the new connection. Now I'm asking for what I need to know. We have a dialogue going. He's not talking at me. So now he's, what kind of connection? A connection um, in which I can better understand what your needs are. And on a present request. Does that clarify for you the kind of connection I'm talking about? You see, always end on the present request. That keeps the flow going. And I'd like you to tell me what some of your your current needs are in our family situation. so I can be criticized again you're always criticizing me I can Gabby I can see that you're hurt by some of the things that I are you feeling hurt never sound like you're telling the person what they're feeling are you feeling hurt not I can see are you feeling hurt are you feeling hurt right now? And always connect the other person's feelings to their needs. Are you feeling hurt right now because you're not being seen? That's my thought, but hear the need because you have a need for understanding that isn't getting met. Are you feeling hurt right now because you have a need for understanding that isn't being met? Yes. You're always saying cruel things to me. <laughs> well, 
Well, I'd like to. I'd like to try to. <laughs> no, enjoy my pain. Now, enjoy my pain. See, now this is a good chance to practice the key ingredient of nonviolent communication: how to enjoy the other person's pain. Now, to do that, you must first release yourself from any responsibility for it. See, if you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, look what I've created, you're not going to enjoy my pain at all. If you think you have to make things better or heal this, you're not going to enjoy my pain. You're going to be in agony until you can fix it and everything you do to fix it is going to make it worse. So you can enjoy my pain by trusting that there is a miraculous energy that works through human beings that can heal anything if we do what is necessary for that energy to work through us. And what is it that we need to do to have that energy work through us? To remember the Buddha's advice. Don't do something. Be there. So the silence that I was getting back from you for the first few seconds there, that was more, more precious. Just that you didn't immediately jump in and say, but, but, but. Just that space where you weren't so scared of my feelings that you had to say something. Yes, that alone was helpful. But it would also be helpful to just stay with, stay with. That's how that miraculous energy works through us, when we just connect with. And what I mean by enjoy the pain, of course, is not that we want the person to be in pain. It's really what I mean is enjoying that that energy is always there to heal anything that we don't have to fix it. That energy will. That's what I mean by enjoy it. To trust that energy and do what we can to let, to let it work. So, in addition to the silence, which was powerful, continue with, are you feeling because you're needing? See, even if you do it silently, that would be helpful, as long as that's where your attention is. But say it out loud now, just to get the rhythm. Yes, oh, you can keep saying these things and make me feel terrible. I don't need any more of that. Are you feeling hurt because you, you're needing some understanding? Yes, but you never give it to me. All you do is close out. Okay, I got the empathy from the silence in your eyes. So you must think I'm stupid for getting so emotional. That's my way of saying I need to know how you feel now, Dad. I've made myself very vulnerable. I really care about the way you feel, Gabby. And I have a need to be connected with you. And I'm wondering if you'd be willing to continue to explore this with me. Yeah. want me to make him suffer a little bit more. <laughs> yes. I think it could have happened this quickly, and it could have been another hour, two hours, but uh, I just wanted us to get the rhythm. Yes. Yes, generally, unless, you're, you're, unless you just want to talk about boring subjects. 
and you don't want any connection. I'm saying that when, that when we want a connection with people about emotional issues, express what's in your heart, your feelings, your needs, in about 30 words, and then take the rest of the 40 to make a present request. Human beings in an emotional situation, it's asking a big gift to them to give you their full attention for the 40 words. Uh, more than that, your chance of getting the attention you want is... One of the reasons we use more than 40 words is we're so scared about making ourselves vulnerable. That most of the unnecessary words that we express are to justify our feelings or to justify our needs. We think we have to justify sell the other person on the importance of something, not realizing that those words uh, decrease the likelihood we're going to get the connection we want. So feelings and needs, and, a qu and then quickly. That should be 30 words to say what they did, our present feelings in relationship to it, our needs, and then present request. And when it's one person that we're speaking with, Keep in mind, it's always the same request. I'd like you to tell me. Now, what we want them to tell us, that can go in different directions. But we usually forget that. See, because this requires our being, our living in the moment, our being alive right now, being conscious of what do we want. And that's a consciousness that not many of us have developed. I'm I'm very concerned about reestablishing trust with her right now, and um, I want to be um, um, empathetic with with her own needs. And if her need isn't to to have eye contact with me or to even face me bodily, I want to respect that, because part of what I'm feeling is. Um, that out of my intention to connect, um, I can be overbearing. And in that overbearing, I want to, in, in many respects, I want to give her, even though I know you can't do this, I want to give her the power. You want to respect her choice. I want to respect her choice. I want to be more attentive to her own needs and her own power. And if that means backing off physically and not being so um, in her face. But I think there are times when the other person wants this desperately, more than the words they would like me either to have the eye contact or to touch them. And so then I do that with somebody and they say, leave me alone, quit patronizing. So that's what's fun about human beings. We, we can never know ahead of time what's right. Uh, but we'll find out. Yeah, so sometimes it helps, and, uh, the, uh, and sometimes uh, it doesn't. So we have to be conscious as we're offering it. How is the person receiving it? Is it in harmony with their needs? Sometimes that touch is more important than any words. Sometimes, but I want to make sure when I touch, it isn't, they're there, you'll feel better. See, it's not to, to do that. It's just a, a, another way of saying, I'm with your feelings and needs. I'm with you. I'm with you. You've made it so obvious, I don't think I need to say anything, but I'm with you. You're aware of how important this whole thing is to start with oneself. If you're not connected to the life in yourself, it's going to be very hard to connect with others. It reminds me of a time right here in San Francisco now, about I think it was about 1970, I was at a participant in a workshop. And uh, at one part in this workshop, uh, we were working in small groups, and one of the activities they gave us in the small groups was a rejection exercise to pick one person in the group who you felt the least comfortable with, lead them by the hand out of the group, then go back to the group and explain why you didn't want that person around. So you, that person got a chance to know you were being talked about. Uh, okay, you got the exercise. Then after this, after everybody had a turn, if you wanted to know and you were one of the rejectees, uh, why, you could ask for it. Okay, so I was in a group with five other people, and I was selected by four of the other five. <laughs> and uh, I was curious, I asked the people uh, the reason, and 
The first three, I knew how to handle it. I didn't feel bad about it at all, because what did they do? They said, you're an intellectualizer. You sit there, we never hear what you're feeling, you don't say much, and when you do, it's in the form of an analysis. So notice they're doing the same thing to me. See, when they say, you are an intellectual, so I was sitting there enjoying it, because I know how to deal with that. I was diagnosing what's wrong with them for being so insecure with my, my style, you see. So. But the other member, the fourth one, was a young man, and I wish over the years I had known his name to tell him how important this was to him. All he said was, I, I just, I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you when I never hear your feelings. And that probably was one of the biggest gifts I got. So I'm saying this only because uh, I can tell you for about the next six months, I envy your 12-word uh, feelings, or six or whatever you said, because I think I had two. I feel good, I feel bad. I mean, uh, <laughs> but even that, even that made a difference, that I was looking for the feelings instead of immediately with the analysis. Uh, I'm also thinking of a woman in uh, Topeka, Kansas. She went home with those lists, and she had an argument with her husband the first evening, and she said, just a second, I want to use what I was learning today. It says for me, to, what am I feeling right now? Let me look. Uh, she goes down this list, right? And she says, my two children got up and they looked over my shoulder and said, Mommy, is it this one? No, it's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, even my husband got up and he got so... <laughs> he says, what about this? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, so, and then we all laughed. We just saw it and laughed, you see? So, how wonderful. Yeah, that's a good way to learn. Okay, now who is the other party in this? Um... Sorry, oh, I feel incredibly vulnerable about this. Um, this is my, don't know how to define her, my lover, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> Has been, uh, there's been, well anyway, she, yeah. So, talk Friend directly lover. to her. Let's hear the message that you started today with. What is my message to you that's hard to deal with? What is my message? That's the one that I asked to begin this whole dialogue. The hard to hear message. The please that's not easy to hear is a please. That it's not easy for her to hear. No, or uh, it's easy uh, for me to hear. What does this person say that's not easy for you to hear with giraffe ears? Uh, well, it's more what she hasn't said. What hasn't this person said? <laughs> uh what's going on what's been going on so we were living together and there was a clearly so let's expressed let's just talk to her oh, now okay let's just talk to her now you see. just then you started off what do you want to say to her speak in giraffe as best you can to start off so what do okay. you want to say to her i feel um a lot of pain and sadness that you haven't let me know what's happened. What's now, if you want to, what's bring been going other, on with if you? If you want to bring the other person into it, yeah. start with when you. Oh, okay. But after you get the pain, I feel pain, and now you say that you. Oh, that won't work. It's going to be okay. very hard for the person not to hear that they're being blamed for it. You see, once our feelings are on the mm -hmm. table, we want to connect our feelings with the speed of light, <clears throat> with our needs. Okay. And once our needs are on the table, with the speed of light, a present request. Everything else that gets in the way between the feeling and the need is going to reduce the likelihood will be understood. Everything else that gets in the way between the need and the present request is going to reduce the likelihood. So if we want to make a, an observation, I would recommend starting with it when you, before you get to the feeling. Okay, I'll try. Yeah. Um, it feels difficult to get from what seems like a distillation of a story to the essence. Yes, and that's good practice for us all because most of the stories we tell get in the way of our getting what we want. Right. 
especially if we want understanding for our present pain and we think we have to tell our listener what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to the present pain, they're asleep. <laughs> yes. We don't need to talk about what happened. We need to talk about what's alive in us right now about what happened. That's where the healing takes place. That's where the connection takes place. So the, the fewer words for the observation, the better. Mm -hmm. The real focus of the, me the message needs to be what's alive in us right now, our present feelings and needs. When you avoid... That's a diagnosis. Oh, got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> when you... <laughs> oh. Maybe an accurate diagnosis, but uh -huh. it's a diagnosis. Um, well, the, the experience I'm having is... Now, what is my behavior? What's your behavior? Yes, that you're interpreting as avoidance. When you... Uh, don't... Um, address... Um, when you don't tell me. When you don't tell me why you're not following through on agreements. Now we got it. From now the that's past. A, that's or now intentions you, that now you want Now if you want to make life miserable for yourself, you'll yeah. document that by showing several times right, I did. <laughs> I would not recommend it. Okay. I think that that's more than enough talking about the other person. Okay. okay. <laughs> now what we want to do is get to the heart of the matter. Okay. Now we want to go in your heart and say how you feel right now about that. What needs of yours are not met and your present request. We've used about eight of the, the 40 words. Okay. okay, now to our present feelings and needs. I feel hurt. Yep. And not valued. Oh! No? I feel hurt. That's how you are interpreting oh, okay. this, that I the feel person hurt doesn't value and abandoned. You. Oh! Shit! <laughs> I feel hurt and... Just feel hurt, huh? Okay, I, I feel hurt. <laughs> well, okay, now, if you're, if you're conscious, you'll see that 90% of your pain mm -hmm. is not because your need isn't getting met in this situation. Mm -hmm. It's because you're interpreting it that you're not valued and you're being abandoned. Mm. See, most of our pain in a situation like this is not at the loss of our need not getting met. It's created by our images mm. of what is going on. Well, actually, So if you mm -hmm. carry an image of not being valued and being abandoned, you're going to really suffer. I'm actually not feeling it. It was more like a thought left over. Okay. So well, I feel then, hurt. Then let's not get it in there because okay. when these are not left over but they are present, uh -huh. they, I'm saying they create more pain for us. Right. And doubly they, the problem, they, if they say them out loud, the other person is likely to hear that as a criticism, and we're going to get further from getting our need met. So let's erase, abandon, okay. not valued. Let's stay with the hurt. Okay. And now with the speed of light, connect that with an unmet need. I think I have to start from the beginning. Again. Okay. When you... Don't follow through. When you don't when, do what you when say. You, when, it, when, you, when you don't do what you said you, in do. you would do okay. with regards to our relationship, yes. I feel hurt. Yeah. And what I want. Because I'm oh, needy. Oh, don't go to the request until you get the unmet need. Because I need. Um, connection. Uh, trust. Yeah, that yeah. is right. Trust. I need the trust. And okay. Uh, I need to trust that things will be done when people say. Okay. Um, and now to a present request. With the speed of light to the present request. And what I'd like is... For you to um, 
follow through on that's what, general and future uh, what I'd Got, like it needs to be a clear present request that's a vague future request I'd like you to follow through I'd like you, you to let me know what happened well that's a future thing clearly yes. there's a lot that's come up yeah but, but she's a, not shared with me yeah, what it is yeah, so what I'd like your present request I'd like to know what's going on inside now of you. Now we're getting there. Now we're getting I'd like to know what's going on inside of you. We've got to get even your more specific. What you're get feeling. Even, I'd like you to tell me what. What do you want this person to tell you right now? Where you're at, how you're feeling. But those are two different things. Where uh, you're at could take four hours and not give you the information. How you're you feeling. Want. Okay. Um, about your previous commitments. About the agreements that we made? Yeah, about the agreements we made. Good. That's, that's the four thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what, is this, what would be a challenging reaction for you to get at this moment from the person? That would be a good test for your giraffe ears. Yeah. Mm, actually, I think if I was that clear, it might not be too giraffey. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I maybe some I don't know what I feel. I don't know. Okay, that's a good one. That's a real good one. I don't know. And of course, we know from the tone of voice that the person didn't hear you. See, if a person hears what's in our heart you will feel from the tone of their voice and the look in their eyes that they just received a precious gift. Mm -hmm. This doesn't sound like this person received a precious gift. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So we know they didn't hear us. Mm -hmm. Anytime so the look in the other person's eyes are not the look of a little child receiving a gift from Santa Claus, we know they didn't hear us. If we've spoken pure giraffe, we will see in the other person's eyes the eyes of a child receiving a gift from Santa Claus. If they look like this, <laughs> they're hearing a demand. If they look like this, they've heard a criticism. Hmm. I don't know. So, can I, uh, no, not can I, um, I'd like to, ask you to tell me <coughs> what you think I said so I can tell if I b made myself clear. You said I didn't honor our commitments. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, you did say that, but that isn't the, the main part you wanted her to hear. It's only if the person just hears that that right. they hear criticism. Which is so, so the real important part, that's why I say the focus of our message, the part that needs to be uh -huh. the most, the focal part of the whole thing is the feelings and needs. If the person is not connected at that level, you're not going to get what you want for reasons that you want. So It's that part hmm. which gives us power with people. When they see what's in our heart, that increases the likelihood that if they do what we want, we ask, it'll be coming out of the energy that we want it to come out of. If they just hear the request, they don't see what's in our heart. They may be giving in, giving up, giving out of fear of punishment. So this person heard just your observation, but they didn't do what they said they were going to do. I also... said, I also would like you to hear that what I really need, um, what I, hmm. I I'm sad because I need to feel connected with you and I want to know how you're feeling about that. Well, I'm sorry if I hurt you. And now you'll pay for it, see, until we clean that up. Because if the other person 
feels responsible for our feelings, mm -hmm. we will soon be the biggest drag in the world for that person. It will be more fun for them to be with a serial killer than us. So how do I do that exactly? Uh, Well, you need to point out that uh, she didn't hear what you said. So let's learn how to correct a jackal's misunderstanding. First okay. of all, we do not want to say, that isn't what I said. Uh -huh. We do not want to say, you're misinterpreting it. Uh -huh. We do not want to say, no. What do we say? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, because the person did what you asked. She told you. You didn't say, I want you to tell me what you heard me say and get it right, sucker. You didn't say that. <laughs> you said, uh, I'd like you to tell me what you, to tell me what you heard so mm -hmm. I can see if I made myself clear. So mm -hmm. she told you. She's mm -hmm. hearing you blaming, uh, make, uh, guilt, tri guilt tripping her, mm -hmm. telling her that she's making you feel sad or hurt. So she's apologizing. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I hurt you. I'm sorry if I made you feel sad. So you need to say, thank you for thank telling me you. that's what you heard. I'd like you to hear a difference between what your stupid jackal ears heard <laughs> and what my giraffe tongue said. Uh -huh. You don't want me to say it like yes, that. Yes, I want you to say it. <laughs> okay. <You do. laughs> but I'm not sure it would be the best for you to say it then. Maybe I need to just be willing to hear it inside and... No, uh, what, we need, what we need to do is just be aware of how frustrating it is for us when our messages aren't understood. And Boy. give ourselves some empathy for that. So when we do say, I'd like you to hear it differently, it doesn't come from that energy. Well, the one It really comes from, thank you for giving me this chance to be clear. Mm -hmm. But I'd like you to hear a difference between my saying you're responsible for my feelings or you made me sad. And just that uh, the main thing I need you to hear is what need of mine isn't being met. Hmm. See, that's the main thing I need you to hear, that the need for connection. So could you tell me that part? So it's mainly you want me to hear your need for connection isn't getting met. Thank you for hearing. Okay. So now what do you want from the jackal? The jackal's understood you. Now what do you want? What I want is to know how you're feeling about the commitments you made I feel in that our you're, relationship. I feel that you're too demanding. <coughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all of course, uh, if you had giraffe ears on, you wouldn't have heard that. Did you hear that she said that you were too demanding? I did. Ah, you got your ah, giraffe, you got your giraffe ears on okay, too late. So say, say it again. I'm going to try to listen with giraffe ears to okay. see if they hear something else. I feel that you're too demanding. Uh, uh, are you feeling a little uncomfortable with me asking this question? Nope, not with that. See that? Oh. Still the same doing the, oh. Still taking responsibility oh. for the other person's feelings. You mm -hmm. see, you say, yeah, that's still implying that you are causing the other person's feelings. Okay. It's not good for the other person for you to re reinforce that because that the whole culture in which they've been educated in reinforces the idea that other people can make you feel as you do. Yes. So uh, you don't want to reinforce that. That's violent for everybody to believe that you can make another person feel as they do. Mm -hmm. So let's try it again. Are you feeling uncomfortable because... Why? Are you feeling uncomfortable because... I asked you. Oh, oh no. Wait, are you feeling uncomfortable because... So I can't say I. Okay, no. that's pretty clear. Never connect yourself with the other person's pain. Are you feeling uncomfortable because I... You, you need my need because... No, the other person's. The other person's. Because you're needing. You're needing. Because you're needing... Wait a sec. Autonomy sounds more right than anything anybody else is saying. Because you're needing, oh, but you're wrong. Uh, do I go right away there to this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Even if you don't do it out loud, that's all you hear are feelings and needs with giraffe ears on. Uh -huh. You never hear what another person thinks about you. You'll live longer. I'm just not sure what she's needing. We don't feeling. have to be sure. Even if you guess wrong, 
better to guess wrong what the person is needing okay. than to hear what they think about you. Well, are you feeling um, Oh my gosh. When you uh, when I no, I don't want to say I <laughs> gosh, this is what happens to me. I just feel completely well, look what's paralyzed. happening to me. <laughs> oh it's like this every time I'm like in the jaws. Yep. And yep, yep. I just feel so like devastated. Yeah, it's very painful when you get caught up in that and don't know how to get out of that. You'd really like to be able to connect without having to go through this. Torture, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So let's uh, to give you a little different kind of practice. Let me use some modern veterinary science and graft some giraffe ears onto this <laughs> gel. Okay. Now, you don't have to worry about giraffe. I've got the giraffe ears on. I'll, I'll do the giraffe work. So very often this happens in our relationship to you, and you'd like me to see how painful it is when you get caught up in what I say and lose connection with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then you see how I react to that, and it gets us further apart, and it's even more painful for you. Yeah, and I feel really scared when you get angry and defensive. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. reactivated. activated. <laughs> yeah, you get scared. You'd like to be able to connect with what's alive in me at that point, and and at that moment, you're just overwhelmed by the feelings and. Yeah. Yeah, and real sad because you really want to have that ability to connect with me. No matter how I'm communicating. More than anything in the world, our relationship yeah. is really important to me, and I'm so frustrated that this is so difficult for me yeah. and for us. So when you want something so much to not be able to connect in a way that makes it happen, it just is a, it's a very painful feeling. A deep, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like a, a suffering for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> and I feel like um, it's been so frustrating to have worked so hard and I still don't feel. Yeah. Like I have the skills or yeah. something that I need in order to <coughs> effectively connect <coughs> with you and not fall into this kind of place of collapse. Yeah. So as much work and energy and hope as you've put into trying to break out of this, it's discouraging. <laughs> and you'd, you'd really <laughs> like to have more results by now. something wrong with me that I can't do yeah, this. Yeah, you get discouraged with yourself. You <laughs> really want to understand what keeps you from being able to do this. What yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, there must be something I'm just not seeing. I, I don't think there's really something wrong with me, but somehow... But you would really like to learn from this. What's keeping me from doing this? Yeah. yeah. It's frustrating not to see what's keeping me from doing this. Exactly. As much as I want it, uh, it's, it's very frustrating, despairing even at times, to not be able to make the connection that will get you the intimacy that you need. Exactly. Yeah. You like me when I wear these ears, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> A lot better. <laughs> And I have the feeling that, you know, you want the same thing with me, and it 
would make you very happy if I could show up with giraffe ears. <laughs> well, can you hear me now, or do you want me to hear you more? No, I would like to hear that, uh, what you have to say. First, I'm very touched that you un for that empathy. Yes, because I have almost word for word the same feelings that you just expressed. That I, I desperately want a certain quality of connection. And I, too, have wish that I knew how to, to act and make that connection. And, uh, and I wish, especially when I need empathy, I, was, I communicated differently than I do. Instead of saying the things that I do about when I'm angry, uh, I wish I knew how to say those same things in terms of the pain that I'm really feeling behind those judgments of you. And I wish I knew how to say what my needs are at that time. And, and I take responsibility for how I say things. Certainly would put a test of anybody's giraffe ears to hear. Wow. I feel very touched for you to tell me that. It, it's been really painful. It's been so painful. <laughs> I really didn't know you felt that way. Yeah. <laughs> you get so angry and yeah. frustrated and yeah. blame me. Yeah. And you're so adamant about feeling like you don't think you should have to change anything. Yes, yes. The more my inner jackals tell me there's something wrong with me, the, the more I resist that and deny any <laughs> responsibility. My inner jackals are brutal with me. Oh, I can hear that. And then when anybody else suggests that I get change, then I... I am adamant about not wanting to hear that. It's hard to deal with hearing outer jackals when your inner jackals are making demands on you. Yeah. <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So if I'm understanding you, Jackal, um, what I said this morning is really what you're trying to say, that when you are trying your best to say please and have the most desperate need for empathy with what's going on in you, it's coming out in a way that is very easy for other people to hear as an attack. Exactly. Exactly. And it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. When I'm needing empathy the most, I communicate in a way I can't see how anybody could give it to me. Well, I'd like to see if I can do it, Jackal. Would you give me some test of my giraffe ears? I'd like to see you at your Jackal worse and see if I can hear the pain behind it. Oh, yeah, it'd be fun for me. Okay. So now you're the Jackal. I'm the Jackal. And I'm you. And I'm going to really try to put the giraffe ears on when you need it the most. But it's the hardest to do. Well, wait a minute. Am I me or her? You're her. I'm her, her, at, her, at her Jackal. Most, at her most Jacklish self. Okay. And I'm going to test whether I can wear these ears under those circumstances. Right. When the jackal needs me to do it the most. Where's my seat belt? <laughs> uh, you're always trying to change me. And manipulate me. <laughs> and control me. Here's what's going on inside of me now. My jackals are going crazy. You know why? This is the extreme test of giraffe ears. She's telling me that I am what I've always feared I might be. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh boy, this jackal really <laughs> knows how to give my giraffe ears a test. 
She's telling me that I am what I've always feared I might be. Now, if these damn things are worth anything, they should work under these conditions. But it's, it's the ultimate test of quality level giraffe ears. Whether, whether they work when the other person is telling you what you are, what you've always feared you might be. Because then you're, you're hearing a jackal message out there. It's saying the same thing as your inner jackal message. So, yeah, I'm having to do some emergency first aid work here. Put these ears on inward. Oh, my God. Oof, I'm overwhelmed right now. <laughs> I'm judging myself. Why am I such a controlling, horrible person? What's wrong with me? I can't even imagine what I'm feeling and needing behind this. All I can hear, I'm a terrible, controlling person. <sighs> What's beneath that? What is my need beneath that, judging myself that way? Yes, I really would like to express my pain in a way that doesn't feel oppressive to others. I really would like to be able to express myself in a way that others didn't, didn't stimulate this image that I'm controlling. It didn't threaten their autonomy. Hmm. Now maybe I can hear her feelings. So it sounds like it's really aggravating for you that you, you would like to be able to express yourself and trust that you'll be understood and your, your needs will be understood. And you don't always have that trust? You never do that. Yeah. It's really hard to trust you. Yeah. So you really would like to be understood and you're feeling kind of hopeless about whether you can get that need met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to tell me, Jackal, while I have these giraffe ears on? You're always running life out of your agenda. And I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah. You really want to feel like what's alive in you is valued and and that you're not having to adjust yourself to someone else's needs or standards. Yep. And mm -hmm. more than anything, I want you to get outside of yourself and have some compassion for what I'm going through. Yeah. So you're in an enormous amount of pain right now, and it's when you really need this understanding the most that it's hard for you to deal with what's going on in someone else. You really need the empathy yourself. Yeah. And I didn't, I haven't been talking to you because I don't, yeah. you can't give that to me. So you're feeling hopeless about getting that in our relationship. and. And you want to protect yourself from the continuing frustration and pain of trying for it and not getting it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm still here. Yeah. So there's still. I just haven't known what to do. So. So you're stuck. There's still a part of you that's hoping we can connect in a way that's valuable to both of us, but you're feeling more and more discouraged about that. I do feel hopeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there more you would like me to hear, Jack? I wish I didn't feel so hopeless. Mm hmm. And I wish, I wish, oh, well, I wish I didn't hurt you so much. Mm -hmm. When you I see me, when you see me in pain, you feel in a lot of pain. 
You'd yeah, and I feel like I'm to blame. You'd like to really contribute to my well-being, and it's very painful for you when you see me in pain. Yeah, and I feel like I'm to blame. Yeah, yeah. You'd like to be able to s connect with me at that time in a way that's nurturing for us both, rather than blaming yourself. Yeah. Yeah, there's a chorus of jackals in my head when I see you in pain. And yeah. I can't even yeah. stand to be with myself, yeah. and so I get angry at you, yeah. and I scream yeah. at you. Yeah. 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 And it's really yeah. because they're all screaming at me, and I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 Well, I never saw that before. Yeah. I am glad that you asked me to talk with you, mm. even though I still feel a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a sense, more of a sense of connection and a glimmer yeah. that maybe mm -hmm. it would be possible to really be able to connect. Yeah. And that feeling like you're hearing me right now and I feel just as desperate for you to hear me and to have compassion mm -hmm. for me as I think I hear you saying mm -hmm. you want from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I still feel kind of overwhelmed, like yeah. this feels like a big task, and I yeah. feel like I just crawled one little step. Mm -hmm. But that's a big cry for running a marathon. <laughs> Which is kind of what it feels like it'll take to be able to have good communication ongoingly between us. Can you hear how I feel about this jackal right now, or do you want some more empathy from me? If I told you the truth, yeah. I'm hurting so much about this. Yeah. I guess I'd like you to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I'm grateful for your honesty. So you're still needing more awareness of just how painful this combination is for you. Yeah, and I know I act really tough, like cool, like this isn't bothering me. But I just don't know anything else to do when I feel so overwhelmed and frustrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess I want you to know that. Yeah. 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 You'd like me to be aware that you're aware that you express it sometimes in a way that might be hard to hear, but. You still need empathy at those times, and how painful it is for you, and you don't know how to express it differently, or you don't get the empathy you need. It's, it's very discouraging for you. I think I noticed that. I feel ashamed of my needs, like I can't ask you to give yeah. me empathy mm -hmm. uh, in a way that makes it easy for you yeah. to do it, because I don't really believe I deserve it, uh -huh. and I don't really also trust that you can do it. Yeah, so when you do have such a need, part of you worries that you, even if you ask for it, I wouldn't, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't really get it. And the other part of you is pretty brutal with yourself, saying you shouldn't even have the need. And so then you don't ask for it, your pain builds, and then it comes out in a way that makes matters worse, and it's even more painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that I've been so angry because I haven't felt okay about this need mm -hmm. I have, really. Yeah. That's the big insight for you right now that's important, is awareness of how you're not able to see your own needs as a gift. Wow. 
Wow. It's even a little hard to take that in. Yeah. Just the concept. It's scary to go from thinking there you shouldn't even have them, it's disgraceful, to imagining it as a precious gift to somebody. Yeah. Well, I feel very vulnerable mm -hmm. yeah. about having these needs, especially with you. Yeah. feel uh, really more vulnerable with you than anyone mm -hmm. and terrified of you mm -hmm. seeing that because mm -hmm. then you could control me. Yeah, so being that vulnerable, you're really scared to put you in a position of worrying about how this could be used against you and you could be controlled with it. You have used it against me. Yeah, you're remembering in the past, that your memory now leaves you with more fears and wanting to be sure that this doesn't happen again. It's really scary just to even let you know this. Yeah. It's a huge risk for me. It is scary to let you, for you to let me know what's alive in you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I notice I'm feeling angry now. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, attack you. You want me to understand. You. you want me to understand what's happened in the past that contributes to your fear. Yeah. You want me to see how my behavior has stimulated this and played a role in it. Yeah, and I also mm -hmm. want you to hear how sensitive I am about this. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing, how scary it is for you to be talk talking with me at this level. Yeah, to show my vulnerability, mm -hmm. to have any needs, mm -hmm. yeah. to let you know. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I really felt like I was able to hear her heart a lot. I thought the Did way you played her role, I thought you were really empathizing with her. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and you, had I the, you had the giraffe ears on, it seemed to me. And yeah. Played her role with giraffe ears on. And I think the thing that I saw uh, that had kept me stuck was uh, when she'd get angry, I felt so terrified, and I, I didn't trust that there was someone who cared. Mm -hmm. Under the anchor. Yep. And and I felt what was deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my only fear right now is that uh, trusting that when I try to talk to her, uh, that uh. I still won't get scared by anger or make any yeah. mistakes, you know. Yeah. And so let's see. <laughs> Something came to stop. Why should I talk to you? All you do is try to control me. All you do is have your agenda. Nobody else's agenda matters a damn. Are you feeling... Are you feeling like... Nope. Oh, no. Um, Not are you feeling like or that. Okay. You'll be hearing what comes out of the person's head. Okay. Never hear what the person thinks. Uh, I, do I hear you? I feel like I hear you um, wanting me to really hear you. Yes, I'd like for once. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful if for one time you could hear me. 
give up your agenda for even one second. Want me to care about what's going on with you and have But you can't. Compassion. You can't. You couldn't if you tried. Are you hurting from I don't know how to get from here to there. I, it feels like you're hurting. She's and you really mm -hmm. need for me to hear how painful it is. Yes. That yes. I haven't yes. Yes. heard you in the past. Yes. Yeah. You're getting that. Okay. Yes. I was deeply touched, first of all, by seeing all of us, all the empathy that went into knowing That's a past this around. But at the, at the same time, I had a sort of a technical question, which is thinking about feeling need request. Mm -hmm. As I was listening to you give the empathy, the, the request was always, I guess, implicit, like, have I got it right? Or, you know, um, and I, w I was wondering about... You mean the, when I was empathizing? Yeah. Is, is the request... You no, know, when I'm empathizing with another person's pain, I assume that the present request is always for me to react to what they're saying in a way that they feel a connection at the heart level. I guess as to whether that would be best done verbally or silently. That's but I don't deal with the request yet, not when the other person's in pain, not until they're finished with the empathy. That's their request. But, it's their request, but with my no, request. But there's no, when you're empathizing. When I'm empathizing with them. Yeah, is there any request that you're having inside other than have I The only right? request is, is am I connected with you to your satisfaction? Yes. It's, it's either I say it verbally or it's in the form of a question, just a tone of voice. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I noticed at one point you responded to her when you were the giraffe earlier by saying something like, you want me to know that my behavior in the past has contributed to your pain. So something like Stim that. It was a stimulus. stimulus. Contributed but didn't cause. It's a, yeah. it's a stimulus. That was my question. From In my mind, that's always a slippery slope in this kind of it's dialogue. It's a very slippery slope. The main thing is that I be conscious that I'm never the cause of the other person's pain, but I do want to take responsibility for my behavior. Yeah, I'm responsible for what I did. The other person's responsible for how they took it. Okay. And that's a slippery thing, and it's a very important thing to keep that consciousness of what we are responsible for and what we cannot be responsible for. The very word responsible means response able, able to respond. So I cannot take responsibility for something over which I have no control. So I cannot control how the other person takes what I do, which will affect how they feel. So I'm not responsible for that. But I am responsible for what I did. And if she were wanting in that moment for you to, um, in some way, acknowledge that what you did, you know, if, if she persisted in kind of trying to get you to say you're sorry or acknowledge that you did something to hurt me or whatever. I want you to acknowledge that, you know, you're responsible for my pain. Yeah. So you'd like some understanding for how painful this has been for you. More than that, I want you to see how the, you are responsible for it. Yes. You would like me to acknowledge that my behavior stimulated what happened. It was the stimulus for what happened. Okay. Yes. No, I want you to see that you're the cause of my feeling. You hurt me. You hurt me. You want me to see the role that my behavior played in your feeling hurt. Okay. I'm willing to see it. It was a stimulus, but I, I, and you see, once I have this clear, I will never have to say, I'm not the cause of your feeling. I'm not responsible. See, I'm only saying that when I'm just getting this myself and I'm becoming conscious of how much of my life I've been tyrannized by other people's feelings. When we're breaking out of that prison, 
Then you'll he you, you hear a person going through a stage I call emotionally obnoxious. <laughs> you see, emotional slavery is when they feel responsible for other people's feelings. And then when they start to get a glimmer of how much of their life they're not leading by feeling responsible for others, they get this freedom. And then somebody else says, I I'm frustrated that you didn't... Well, I'm not responsible for your feelings. <laughs> well... What if, what if you did lose your temper and you were responsible for them? No. You couldn't hurt another person if you tried. I'm serious. You cannot hurt a person even if your intention is. For example, hurt me. <laughs> Go ahead, hurt me. Um, well, this is all good in, in the academic, but it doesn't work in the real world. Yes. And if I hear what you said, I would be hurt. But that would be my choice to hear what you said rather than what I was hearing was in your heart. If I hear what's in your heart, I'm not going to get hurt by that. I'll see an opportunity to learn something power precious from you. Yeah, but what if, what if I lose my temper with my kid who doesn't have the maturity to, he, to separate my he's action? Still, he's still responsible <coughs> for taking it as he does, uh, technically uh, responsible, but you are responsible for saying what you did. Especially if you know that he's a, ba a child that may not have giraffe ears, you're responsible for why you would say that given that you have a pretty good prediction he's going to hear it with jackal ears. But the child is still the only one to control how he takes it. It was still his actions, his, his hearing it and believing it, that's the cause of his pain. We can show three, four, five-year-olds how to deal with a father like that. Well, when, when is my internal jackal just good superego to realize that I should have be more sensitive to my kids' that's natural immaturity to take something. That's the responsibility I'd like you to be looking at. So I'd like you to look at then why you are not changing your behavior. Uh, and then I'll work with the child and showing him what he can do even if you don't change. I don't want him to think that his security rests on whether you change or not. Hmm. Yeah, and incidentally, I recently in Ojai, California, taught how to do this. We were dealing with how to hear jackal messages with giraffe ears, and I dealt with five groups in one day. The first group were the students aged six to nine, the next group 10 to tw 13, the next group 14 to 18. The fourth group I dealt with were the teachers, and the last group were the parents in the evening. The six-year-olds got it real quick. <laughs> the teachers even though they had been in the, when, with the students when I did it with them, they still had a heck of a time with it. So. Because the kids had less programming to unlearn. Exactly, exactly. Fewer words being trained to hear criticism as criticism. You see, but if you can train them real quick, never hear what an adult thinks. You'll live longer. <laughs> and you'll learn more from them, you see. <laughs> than if you hear what they think. It's toxic if your parents or your teachers have been educated to speak jackal. It's toxic to hear what they think. Yes? Are apologies out of the question then? In apologies are not possible because apologies are based on the premise that somebody did something wrong. So rather than apologize, you say you, you mourn. regret your behavior? Yes, or? you mourn sincerely. You mm -hmm. mourn not that you did something wrong, but that you didn't meet your own needs. Everything that every human being has ever done is out of holy purposes to make life more wonderful. Now, sometimes our actions fulfill our needs to make life more wonderful, and sometimes they don't. So we need to celebrate when they do and mourn when they don't. And any kind of self-blame will interfere with the learning. Now, so... Giraffe mourning, it sounds something like, I was about to do some giraffe mourning, uh, but we didn't stay in the role long enough. If I had been in, in your place, I might have mourned this way. I might have, first of all, wanted to celebrate and say how touched I was that you, given how vulnerable you feel, that you shared so much of yourself with me just now, and I can't think of a more precious gift that I could have received. And I'm sad right now 
because I would have liked to have been much more sensitive to your pain than I was. See, I didn't do anything wrong, but I sh it would have been much easier for me to hate myself in one respect, because I'm so used to that. We get so trained to hate ourselves in a jackal world. But to really mourn requires going more deeply into myself. It's in many respects more scary to see just how sad I am, how I would have liked to have been more aware. But the other person won't have to pay for that, but they'll have to pay for it if I apologize, because they're a stimulus now for my guilt, shame. And every time a person is a stimulus for our apology, they're going to pay for it. Because to whatever degree they are a stimulus for what makes me apologize, I'm going to have it harder to give to them out of a good energy in the future. There'll be a part of me that's giving to avoid the judgment that I agreed with. I have felt so stuck with constantly this sense of this energy in the space of being blamed and feeling guilty and not being able to be free of something kind of hovering over me um, mm -hmm. in my, in my uh, inability to mm -hmm. have communication, um, intimate communication effectively. So um, I really appreciate that distinction very much. It's mm -hmm. kind of a doorway to freedom. <laughs> Finally stop blaming myself about it. Be careful about the objective of stop blaming. Mm -hmm. See, never set an objective to <laughs> get rid of something. Well, when, it, always when I blame set, myself... Always set your objectives to what you want to do differently that will be more effective and less costly. Never try to get rid of something. How about I have an opportunity to learn and grow from everything I do every day. And that's a now new we're getting opportunity. It. Now we're getting it. Now so every time I do something that doesn't meet my needs, uh -huh. I want to use it as an opportunity to grow and learn. Now you can put the negative in there rather than to beat myself up. But the main <laughs> thing we need to do is to get clear what the new option is. Uh -huh. I learned this the hard way many years ago. I put this in the workshop. Uh, it was during the Vietnam War and I was on the... Uh, television debating uh, the, the, the war with an editor of one of the local newspapers in St. Louis. And this was taped, videotaped, so I could go home and watch it later on, you see, in the evening. So I'm watching myself now, and oh my God, there I am doing everything I can't stand when other people do it in a debate. I'm the total jackal if ever you've seen one. Oh, it was painful to watch, but I said, okay, I don't, if the next time I'm in that situation, I don't want to do A, I don't want to do B, I don't want to do C, okay? Now, yeah, apparently people like these kind of blood-curdling things in the, because they got a lot of listener reaction, and I was invited to continue the debate with him. <laughs> people love violence, you see, so I'm in, I was invited back to continue the debate the next week. They had a lot of listener reaction to this. So the next week, though, I'm going to now be a good giraffe. So all the way down to the television studio, I'm saying, now remember, don't do A, don't do B, don't do C, don't do A, don't do B, don't do C. The program starts, and he comes at me the way he had the previous week. And for 10 seconds, I was beautiful. I didn't do A, I didn't do B, I didn't do C. I just stood there like this. <laughs> and can you guess what I did after 10 seconds? A, B, and C, and I made up for the lost 10 seconds, you see? <laughs> and that taught me, you know, it's not enough to get clear what I don't want. In, in those situations, I have to get crystal clear what I want to do instead that's more likely to get my needs met and create less problems. Yes? Just, just for my own clarity, when you say you know, you're not responsible for what something happens to somebody else. Uh, you're not talking physically. You know, it's if no, you beat not someone physically. up, they're not responsible for having I'm, a problem. I'm responsible. Well, even there, technically, if we want to get real philosophical about it, I'm still responsible for my actions. Right. And nature is responsible for the other person's death. 
But you wouldn't say that the other person is responsible for no, the other person's no, no, death. No, not for their death. Because you're saying in the other case, on a verbal level, that we are responsible for our own pain if somebody says something nasty to us yes. and we take it yes. in. Yes. But you wouldn't say the same thing if somebody, you know, cuts our stomach open. Exactly. Or, okay. You see, and, just and, just and, so and this would come so powerful to you if you followed me around in my work when you see, uh, like I have a friend from Rwanda who was hiding underneath the sink when, and heard her three children being killed, her husband, uh, her brother, and for 11 days she survived by hiding underneath there because the people who killed them stayed in the house so she had to sneak out at night to get a little water to survive and get back underneath there. And then the, each day they would celebrate, uh, that she would hear them celebrating how they killed the people. Now I know this woman very, very well and she's never been angry. She hasn't repressed any anger, you see? Now, I can get ready to kill somebody who's taking too long in the checkout line of the grocery store, you see? So, you can't make somebody angry even if you kill their families. It's how we look at it. Now, this woman looked at it in a way that created great pain. She, I would call it natural pain. She suffered immensely, but the way she looked at it, the kind of pain she felt, has led her to unceasing efforts to prevent this happening to anybody else. And why did she originally come into my workshops with such a giraffe orientation to the will? Because she wasn't knowing how to deal with other people from her own tribe who had similar things that hate her because she's working for reconciliation rather than wanting to gain vengeance, you see? So the majority of the people in her tribe had similar things happen. They have such rage all they can do is live for the day when they're going to get revenge. And all of her energy is going into preventing this happen to other people. What stimulus could more powerful than that? Your family being killed. Even that can't make us feel anything. It's how we react to it.